Bulget. Bulget, uh, 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 we'll get the uh, AGOX library installed. We'll not use uh, most of it, um, but we'll use a, a bit for making models in, in just a little while. Um, and then we'll also get uh, some special functions that have been made for this tutorial that can give us structures. And might be I can go back to my slides. Yeah, okay, now I got this. Your session crashed for unknown reasons. And that's perfectly okay. You can just uh, uh, ignore that. And then what you can do is you can run the next cell and then you, it should uh, hopefully print this thing that you can, you can go on. That, that means that now everything is installed as it should be. Uh, and yeah, okay, but then I can stay in the, uh, now that we're here, I can stay inside the tutorial. So this is the outline of the tutorial and um, I will, I will do a little bit, I'll, I'll probably do the first two topics here and then I'll return to the lecture and then I'll do a, a new topic and so on. Um, so we'll not do all of this right away, but first I'll detail what is the, the structural problem that uh, we have set up for you to solve. And, um, and, it, and here you have it. So um, it, we have taken a small two-dimensional gold Nickel cluster, gold the yellow, uh, nickel the green atoms, and then uh, we have uh, made a pathway through out of configuration space that takes us from x equals zero to x equals one. That's just an arbitrary new uh, uh, coordinate in, in in configuration space. And what happens along this coordinate is that the seven atoms inside that circle they just rotate. Uh, quite a bit uh, from uh, from having the three uh, nickel atoms pointing downwards to pointing uh, at uh, 10, 11 o'clock. Um, so that's what it is. And uh, you should be able to say here, yeah, I actually write your code here, but uh, you can start, you can write, you can run this cell without um, uh, modifying it. And then you can run the next cell where it's, uh, it plots, again, with some function we have uh, prepared, it, it plots uh, the atoms uh, just like in this diagram up here. But then you can go back where I say your code, and you can say, ah, okay, I want to see what happens uh, from, uh, from 0 to 0 0.25. Uh, and I want to see uh, five structures in that uh, range, and then you run that. I mean, you can familiarize yourself with uh, what this means. So you can see here, now you get, you get more detail for the first quarter of the pathway. So during this quarter of the pathway, you, you have rotated, uh, it seems, one sixth of, the, uh, uh, of a full rotation. And um, uh, the not available thing, forget about that. It, it, uh, if um, actually it, it works with something called ASE, are, are, are people familiar with ASE? Somebody, those of you who are familiar with ASE, the Atomic Simulation Environment Package, uh, you will uh, appreciate that the, uh, the the structures that come out of this can uh, share the same uh, properties as uh, atoms objects in the ASE, and uh, and the not available. Just it would have printed the uh, energy had the uh, structure had an energy attached, and then um, we uh, we have this uh, other uh, method for you, which is called get true energy, and that is if you if you provide it with a structure that has been created by this other uh, method, it can give you the energy, and you can see here I. Now get energies um, for the for the five structures that I settled on the ones that only run one uh, quarter of the pathway, and it will look different on on your screens uh, if uh, depending on what you decided on uh, on uh, looking at, and the and the uh, question now is and I'll go I'll probably probably go back here and cover the entire range because otherwise it's a little difficult to discuss. So I'll, I'll go back and cover the entire range with 10 structures. So now I get 10 energies uh, when I plot them. And then we have also prepared 
No, that's not, that's a matplotlib. This, that's not something we have prepared. Here you just use matplotlib to plot the energy as a function of this reaction coordinate. And now the question is, where should, uh, how, how, what is the optimal coordinate along this path? Where does uh, this um, set of uh, gold and nickel atoms, where do they attain the best uh, positions? And uh, Masbeda has put in a, a small counter. I'm not sure, if, I think he forgot to return to it later on in the, uh, in the tutorial, but it actually keeps track of how many times have we done a calculation. So, so we get we can get to know uh, uh, if a prediction, uh, I mean, how many uh, of these expensive DFT calculations uh, were involved. However, this is the, the calculator we have set up here and the energies you get, they are not DFT calculations. They are EMT, effective medium theory calculations that uh, Christo Niemann and uh, has uh, been uh, part of uh, introducing 30 years ago, which uh, run really fast. Uh, uh, but it's good enough for, for, for us as a, um, as a target energy landscape. It's not expensive, but we pretend that it's expensive and we should avoid making too many of those uh, calculations. Okay, so now you, you have familiarized yourself with the data. This is the limited space we are allowed to be in. Now comes the representation. And, um, and here we, we uh, have uh, prepared a little bit of code also that uh, takes one of the structures and uh, let's see which one it takes. It takes the first one up here. You, you can actually modify this and get uh, any other structure from, from zero to one if you like. Then it will look a little bit different on your um, screens um, but otherwise run this and then you will you will get four new structures and uh, and these structures have this property that I just described that they are they are the same except when you go from zero to one you have translated the entire system when you go from two from, from zero to two you have rotated the entire system. And then there's something new in the in the last one. That is, you have interchanged atoms zero and one. And the first thing I ask you to hear is to to write a piece of code. Basically, I just put this in so you wouldn't say run all, and then all cells in the entire notebook will be run. <laughs> uh, so you should. I ask you here kindly to uh, inspect. Uh, the coordinates of the uh, first two atoms in these four structures. And uh, you can see up here, those of you who are not familiar with uh, ASE, the atomic simulation environment, you can see up here that, that uh, we have a method on an atom subject, which is positions. So you can say, you can say positions, and then you get all positions inside the atom subject. You can try it for, yeah, that's um, those of you who, who are familiar with ASE, you can just uh, uh, stop listening and then I can write something here. So I can say atoms. I'm, I'm basically solving the problem now. I, I hope that's okay. That, that, that's how it will work, right? Yeah. Then those of you who, uh, who can solve it yourself, you just uh, go on and do complicated stuff while I do this. So I say uh, uh, print atoms dot positions that will print all positions for, and then let me say, only, I only want the first uh, uh, member of the list. So the first member of the list, so the list contains these four structures. The first member has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 coordinates. Uh, and, the, and that conforms with uh, 10 atoms in, in these small clusters. And the, and the task I asked you was to say, let us see just the first two coordinates. So now I print out the two first coordinates for that structure, and then I go back and say, but I actually want it for all of them like this. So now for all four structures, I get the first two coordinates and let's in inspect them. So uh, the X coordinate of atom zero is minus 1.18 here. 
In the one that is translated to the right, it's 0.18. So, so it has it's been changed by exactly one, and, and you can see the same thing applies to atom number two. Uh, the rotated, okay, I cannot sort of justify that that's uh, rotated uh, in the right manner, uh, but let's take the, um, the one where they are interchanged. Ah, yeah, that also works out fine. So here, first coordinate minus 1.18, Second coordinate two point minus two point sixteen, and they come down here again, but in opposite order. So, so that's that's what has happened to these coordinates, and that's also what is illustrated in this plot. Great. Let's now um, yeah. Um, now, now um, ACOX, as I already said, worked in this way that because things are done in the same way throughout, every uh, algorithm can be boiled down to something that looks like another algorithm you also worked on. Um, because of that, Mespeda has introduced these base classes. So whenever you need to do something, it's nice to represent it as a, as a class. And then you can uh, you can uh, keep details uh, of how uh, uh, things happen in, uh, in 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 one model, say to how they happen in another model. You can keep that in the class. And here he has a class that uh, acts as the descriptor class. So we we um, we want to introduce a, a way of producing a descriptor, but we want to do it in various ways. Uh, one descriptor could be the coordinate along the pathway. Another descriptor could be the Cartesian coordinates. Uh, a third descriptor could be the histogram I had in the slides. And in order to do so, we, we need to, uh, um, to have these uh, descriptors. Uh, uh, classes imported, and that's what happens in the next cell. So we have a reaction coordinate descriptor, descriptor that we import from uh, from this tutorial's um, uh, module. And uh, and and basically, if you run this, you can see that it it has this one method. I mean, you say descriptor equals reaction coordinate descriptor. Now you have a an instance of this class. And then uh, you can use that instance to give you the features. I wonder why, it, I've, um, why does it, have I lost? I wonder why it suddenly takes forever. Okay, um, yeah. So, so the instance can, now has a method which is called get global features. And then I can provide it with whatever atoms I have. So here I gave it the entire list. I could also give it just the first two of them. Uh, and then I would uh, only get uh, the, uh, the descriptor for the first two of them. Uh, and, and you may wonder why are they the same? Well, that's because they're not being calculated. That's because they remember the origin uh, they have. Where, where were they? Uh, generated in the first place when I when I go back here and say okay let me take uh, uh, here get structure which if I say I want a, a, another structure along the pathway up here then I get different types of uh, of uh, um, cases here where the, we have the the translation and the rotation and the permutation and then when I ask about, of course, when I ask about the coordinates, I get different coordinates. And then when I come down here and ask about, what about the, um, uh, the descriptor? What, what, what can that tell me? Then they, it will tell me these uh, two structures you give me, they originate from 0.3 in the uh, pathway. That is not the world's best descriptor. It's pretty poor because the, we know they are different. We just plotted them here. We know they're different and it just spits out the same thing. So we need a better descriptor. And uh, here they, uh, in the next cell, we have the Cartesian coordinate descriptor. And if I run that, we can see here that now 
I get a much richer output. And, and let me go back here. So, so you saw so here, here, I give it the whole list. If I, uh, or here I give it the list, the first two elements in the list. What if I only give it the very first element? Then I only get one value back. Let me do the same thing here, uh, down here to begin with. So I give it the first element and ask what is the descriptor for that element? And then it says, it's this minus 1.16, blah, 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 blah. And I'll go back. I regret that I did this. Uh, I'll go back here because you have memorized the numbers we inspected a minute ago. So in order to recover those, I just go back and uh, create them again based on the first point in the, um, along the pathway. So now you can see here the, the reaction coordinate descriptor is now again zero. And if I run the uh, Cartesian coordinate descriptor and ask for the first one, then I recover this minus 1.18 as an X coordinate for, for the first atom. And then if I scroll over here, I can see minus 2.16. And that was the X coordinate of the second atom. But now what this descriptor class has done is it has uh, concatenated the uh, coordinates or it has flattened the, uh, the array that contains the coordinates so that they all appear as one long vector. That is a perfectly uh, um, um, acceptable way of representing the atoms just as uh, a, a multidimensional vector containing the coordinates uh, one at a time. And, um, and now what we can do is we can, we can uh, with this next piece of code, we can ask the question, uh, how far away is the, um, the second structure from the first structure if you describe them with uh, Cartesian coordinates as your descriptor? And if you use the Euclid Euclidean distance uh, between the two vectors. So, so, so let me print the two vectors here. I only printed one, but if I print two vectors, then, then basically you can ask the question, uh, 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 how far away are these two vectors from each other by just stuffing it into uh, a linear algebra norm uh, implementation in uh, NumPy. And, uh, and then you get these values. So you can see here, they are, they are far apart, these uh, structures. The, the, the default is the one we started from. The one called translated is uh, the one shifted one to the left, to the right, sorry. The rotated is even further away from the default and the permuted is also quite far away. So, so any model that uh, should predict the energy based on a distance measure, We'll, have, we'll see these as very different structures if it's being fed with the Cartesian coordinates. And then um, uh, Ms. Peter has come up with this idea. Why not describe them uh, with uh, at a vector which is 10 long? I mean, these vectors, they were 30 long uh, because we had uh, 10 atoms and they had three coordinates each. But if we, if we say, we, we represent each atom in, the, uh, in these structures with one number. And that one number, I actually have a slide on that. That one number is the uh, distance to, um, to its uh, nearest neighbor. So, so if you settle on the red atom, uh, and, uh, or the, the one with the red number here, number zero, let's see if I can get a, yeah, yeah, this one. If you settle on this, then it could be that number three is the closest one. Then the distance to number three becomes the first coordinate in your descriptor. If you settle on number one, it's, it's perhaps number zero, which is the closest one. Then it's this distance that you should keep here, and so on. If you, um, if you, if you make a uh, distance, oh, sorry, if you make a descriptor like this, then could be that it solves some of our problems with the distance measure. So let's go back into the uh, tutorial. And you, it's now your task to implement this um, descriptor. 
And how do I get it? I, uh, okay, I have to hit here. Okay, and uh, Mas Peter has uh, has done most of the work. So he has uh, he has said, okay, let's uh, uh, we make a new uh, descriptor class, and we we uh, we, we inherit from a general descriptor class. And then whenever someone asks us about the global features, it should calculate uh, the distance matrix. So that is the distance, uh, imagine a 10 by 10 matrix. And in every entry, you have the distance from atom I to atom J. Then after having created that, he adds something to the diagonal so that the diagonal is now a big number. Because then you can search for the lowest value in the matrix by, um, uh, by just taking the min of, uh, of the matrix. And uh, you can see here, if, if, we, if we implement it, you, you have to figure out what to write here. If, if we say we just take the minimum value and we give it, uh, our default atoms. That's what happens here. Uh, no, didn't I? Did okay. Ah, yeah. Okay. I also need here. I also need to say uh, the the nearest neighbor descriptor. Um, this is an instance of my class that I just described above. Uh, so, so I need to take this one. That's in order to be able to use it for something. So I do. I take it here. Now I I have an instance, and then I can I can use the instance and get the the method on the instance like this. And then it will tell me that uh, if I if I give it. Uh, the um, the atoms default, which is some atom. Um, I, I should probably go back and say the test atoms list. That's the one we are familiar with. Test atom list. Where do I here? Yeah, atoms default. Test atoms list. I, I believe it's the first element in that. Um, then it will tell me one number, but that's not what I wanted. I, I, uh, I wanted 10 numbers. And that's because something is wrong with, with this uh, transformation here from a distance matrix that had 10 by 10 numbers. If I just say min, it will find the, the smallest number anywhere in the matrix. But I need the smallest number in each row. So anyone, uh, any suggestions what one could do here? One. Yeah, exactly. You shouldn't, if you, uh, NumPy thinks that it should do it for all dimensions if you don't specify. If you specify that you only want to do it for a certain dimension, then uh, it gives you um, a vector because now it's, it's the minimum along a, a row or a column. I, I always have to do this uh, both ways. And since the matrix is symmetric, it actually doesn't matter. You can put in zero and you get the same, whether it's row wise or column wise, doesn't matter because it was a symmetric matrix in the first place. Okay, so now we have a new uh, de descriptor that is uh, way more advanced. It's the core, well, it's not more advanced because it's still Cartesian coordinates, but it's more advanced than the one that just told us from where did this data point originate. And let's see if we run it on all the data uh, that we have, the, the, the four structures, the, 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 the default, the translated, the rotated, and the uh, muted, then we can see, ah, oh, yeah, uh, it, looks, uh, it, it looks compelling. Um, now, the first coordinate here in this descriptor is actually the same after it has been translated. And you can see it's also the same after it has been rotated. It's not the same after the permutation though. And, uh, and if you run the next cell, 
you will get a histogram de depicting the same thing. So the distance now in Cartesian, no, sorry, in um, uh, not Cartesian, I, 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 I was wrong a minute ago. I said, now we have a more complicated descriptor. And then I refer to it as, as Cartesian. It's not Cartesian because we've just implemented this nearest neighbor uh, concept. So, so we are way beyond Cartesian coordinates now. And that's why, I mean, the Cartesian coordinates suffered from not uh, being able to tell that any of these structures were the same. And now with the, with the uh, minimum distance descriptor, at some wise, we are capable of telling that once you translate one structure, the local environments of every atom is still the same. So the nearest neighbor will still be at the same distance. And once you rotate, the same thing applies. Only when you start swapping the atoms, then there will be a, an, an issue. And then comes uh, to the rescue, a more complicated approach, and that has been implemented and uh, there's nothing you can do <laughs> other than using it. So it's, uh, it's this one here called fingerprint. And it's the same as in, in, the, um, in the slides. It's a, it's a histogram uh, that uh, records all interatomic distances. And uh, we, can, we can run it here. And then we can see what when we do that, uh, what about our problem with the uh, uniqueness? Uh, can it discriminate between or can it identify that these are the same uh, structures? Yes, it can, despite you seeing these bars. You should notice that now the scale is 10 to the minus 14 up here. So, so now uh, with a fingerprint histogram, uh, everything's okay. Let's, let's uh, you can also do this. Uh, let's plot this histogram just to be sure that I'm not sort of, uh, um, uh, conning you and <laughs> claiming that it's a histogram and, and, and let, let's let's see it. So so how do we do that? We can go back and say uh, we want um, we want the we did it in, in this way here. We we want to get the, the the feature printed out. So I make room for that here. But this time it's not the ND descriptor, but it's the one we have just introduced, which is now called FP for fingerprint. So I write fingerprint descriptor, and then I get the global features and let me do it just for uh, the first structure, test atoms list number uh, zero. And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this with an atom. So let me do instead like this. So, so now I get the feature for one structure. That's this way complicated uh, thing here. And let's say we can say xtest.shape to see how big it is. It's uh, one times 270. And I think we should be able to say um, ax, do we have a place to plot? We should probably say fig comma x equals plt dot subplots and then be able to say axis dot his, his axis dot bar I'm not so good at this uh, range 270 comma and then the x test first uh, element and then say fig and then it should show a histogram yes so now I mean, this you, you can understand why this uh, uh, descriptor here is capable of capturing the, um, the translational invariance, the rotational invariance, and the uh, permutational invariance. And that's because it represents all these interatomic distances. And it does that apparently over a very fine grid and whatever. The details of this are not so important. But it was just to, to show you this transition from the, the very simple-minded descriptor to a more complicated one and to then this uh, rather perfect one. And uh, I think uh, now would be a good place 
to yeah, have a break, good. right? Yeah. Yeah. The coffee is set up. So okay. Is... Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you feel free to play around uh, with with this, uh, and uh, we'll be back in fifteen minutes or something. What is twenty or twenty? Yeah. yeah. Great. You figured out how to get it.